Hello. Did you know some grasshopper species become locusts under certain conditions? When food becomes scarce and grasshoppers start overcrowding, swarm-inducing serotonin kicks in and solitary grasshoppers morph into gregarious swarms of locusts. So it went from the um, largest outbreak of animal life in recorded human history in the 1870s to disappearance 25 years later. So that sets up this marvelous continental scale ecological mystery. What the hell happened? We always pay attention to things when they're spectacular. We don't pay attention to them when they're not around. And so nobody knew where the locust was when it wasn't filling the skies and darkening clouds. And it turns out it relied on these sanctuaries in the well-drained fertile river soils of the Rocky Mountains. And it turns out that in, in the 1890s, these are exactly the habitats that were being whole scale converted to agriculture in order to feed the burgeoning gold and silver mining industries of the West. So it was a classic case of habitat destruction. We, you know, frontier farmers armed with cows and plows caused arguably the greatest extinction in the history of applied entomology without knowing it. One of our mothers decided to pass pandemic time by painting over one of the nearly 300 nude portraits she has stored in her attic. This lovely time-lapse video of her painting over the nude might metaphorically represent the ways in which members of society grew more religious thanks to the locust swarm in 1875. Even though the swarm also represents one of the first times the country got together to collect scientific data, in this case, a national entomological study. People who just experienced the swarm saw something right out of the Bible. God smiting people and scientific discovery were happening at the same time. God was apparently even smiting the good people. Hi, I sometimes make these silly time-lapse videos of me doing Photoshop as a sort of animation technique, and during the pandemic I've had a lot of time to make some of them. But anyway, back to the effects of the swarm. Now, up until the swarm hit, poverty was considered a lack of moral character. And then all of a sudden, all these hardworking, pious white people had their livelihoods destroyed. So they had to reconceptualize poverty pretty quickly. Funny how you can do that when you're personally affected. It required the government's first time sending emergency funding to various states for disaster relief. So, for a hot second, white America challenged the notion that poverty equated a moral failing because they were the ones financially devastated. It would have been pretty cool if that lesson had stuck around and had ever been applied to everyone. Ah, America. Anyway, while the indigenous... Wait a minute, what is happening?
And we're back from the musical interruption. The locusts were actually put on trial, FYI. Now, as I was saying, while indigenous populations had long known how to grow crops in harmony with the earth, colonizers called them savages and assumed they knew nothing. It could be argued that the swarm of 1875 led white farmers to crop diversification. Smashing, and scooping, and vacuuming, and praying didn't stop the locusts. But planting beets instead of wheat was useful since the locusts didn't like to eat root vegetables. So for a while, farmers learned how important crop diversification is, something we forgot when it was no longer profitable. Now, corn is king. The Corn Belt holds up America's natural resource-consuming, ethanol-guzzling, bioplastic-making, high-fructose corn syrup-adding plants. But the thing is, you can't win a war against nature. Of course, with the locusts, I wanted to sort of make the case that we lost something, right? I mean, it caused all kinds of, of misery, to be sure. But wow, talk about, I mean, an iconic species that really was humbling in terms of, of, its, of its presence in the Western environment. We have this growing belief, right, that we control nature. We've got it under control, right? You know, the, the most important resource lacking in our society um, is not water and it's not oil and it's not food, it's humility. <laughs> That's right. How long can we use the line, oh shit, who would have thought that would happen? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's the point at which, right, you have to be morally responsible for ignorance. Oh my goodness, will we ever learn about anything? Ever? <laughs> the one thing we do know is that when locusts start to swarm, it's too late. As with many things, uh, what's the old saying? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? Well, I don't know about that. I say, put another band-aid on it. Woo! 